So I'm gonna take some of this stuff off, um, this cap. I mean, there's a gap up here, gap here. I'm gonna guess that when I take this hardware off that I'm probably looking right at bare uh, marine ply. So we'll see. So I'm about an hour, hour and a half into this. I've got all the rub rail off and I have uh, pulled all of the staples that put the top cap onto the hull. And I'm thinking based on um, how this has gone that I should be able to stick a screwdriver shank in there and run it up towards the bow and the cap should pop off. I consulted with a guy that does boat and fiberglass repair. His suggestion was to come in about three inches, cut the seats back, and try and do the transom rebuild from the inside of the boat. So I marked a line, I'm gonna cut this and uh, see if I can get this transom pulled out. So I got a little bit of cleanup work and grinding to do. It's raining. And um, after talking with somebody that does boat restorations and repairs, he leans towards going with a Kusa transom. Uh, kind of fix it once and then don't worry about it again. And I uh, have discovered that sourcing that is difficult and the cost is pretty high it's going to be about 330 bucks for a three-quarter panel if i were to try and do this out of three ace it is uh, a six month lead time to get the panel to make a laminate uh, so i think i'm going to wait a week and see if i end up driving to Minneapolis to pick up a piece of three-quarter Kusa. Uh, I could do this out of plywood a lot cheaper and I could probably have the piece of plywood today, but looking at how this boat is made, I just think it'll instantly uh, start going, or sorry, this rain and weather will instantly start going to work on the repair.
So I've got this piece of Kusa board and it's clamped down to some saw horses. I have my pattern for a new transom trace out and I'm gonna suit up and try and cut this with a carbide jigsaw blade. I've been forewarned this is extremely scratchy, unpleasant stuff to work with. Um, so I'll do a respirator and goggles and uh, coveralls. And we'll see how this goes. Okay, the good news is it shapes really easily with the belt sander. Okay, it's pretty windy, so it might be hard to hear this. Uh, I marked this out to try some curb cuts because uh, I'm 200 pounds and I can stand on it. And while I can flex it, uh, it springs right back. And I'm a little concerned that um, it may distort the stern of the boat uh, when I, you know, try and fiberglass this in. Like once I take the blocks and stuff out, it, I don't, I don't know. I'm a novice here, so I'm gonna try uh, curve cutting as suggested by somebody that uh, works with this. Okay, here's what I got. My thickened resin. It's pretty warm, so I'm gonna get going here. Uh, I've got about 16 ounces now. And I'm gonna get my, uh, I'm gonna get my first coats going on the back side of the stern and on the back side of this piece of board and get it wedged into place and clamped. Um, if you have the ability to get a hold of one of these electric shears for fiberglass, for cutting fiberglass cloth, they make your life a lot easier. The uh, place that sold me the Kusa board recommended stiffening it up with this. I think it's called biaxial cloth. It goes in two different patterns. It's pretty heavy stuff. Uh, this will go on the inside the exposed kusa and uh you know where i put the curb cuts in it'll just stiffen it up so i'm gonna finish trimming this okay it's the next morning everything is uh set nicely uh all the epoxy hardened up uh looks like the mix and thickened epoxy was what i wanted I did a couple of relief cuts so that when I wet this and set it in there, it'll lay nicely over where the existing fiberglass for the bench um, is kind of sticking up. I left that ridge in there so that I could set that Kusa board down behind something and it would, it would wedge down in there uh, because clamping and making sure you got a nice tight seal between surfaces it just seemed easier to leave some of the existing in there to to push against so now i'm just, i'm gonna cut that cloth so it'll lay up in there nice and hopefully uh, this part will be done this morning and then i can start working on fitting the bench back in where i cut it out in order to get that really stiff piece of kusa in and out of there
we've been using the boat for about a month now and we've trailered it motored it had it out in some pretty um pretty strong weather we scratched the paint up we got it dirty and really put it through its paces so uh would i do kusa again yes i would and the reasons that i would do it again is there is zero flex in that um stern or transom whatever your preference motoring it um when we've had to motor it against some pretty strong headwinds and into the waves um there's no flex um it looks as good as it did when we put it in um no stress cracks um and the other thing too is it is uh, reassuring to know that when you leave this boat out exposed to the weather, especially if you had it on a mooring, it wouldn't be uh, sitting there rotting. So would I do it again? Yeah, I would. It's, it's turned into a very stiff, I mean, you can bounce the outboard on it. Um, very stiff final result. Very happy with how it turned out. I think it was well worth the additional money.